house, an after party, which costs extra to get into, but everyone's always there. And then not only do they do they have their own after party, all these different celebrities that are either nominated or won have their own after parties that they invite everyone to as well. It's it's like when you go to AES or you go to NAM, there's the actual show and convention. And then when when the day is over, the after parties. Like there's all these different events going on after the actual main show. So you're in all these different studios. You're you're seeing all these different celebrities and people and producers and writers and just owners and people of industry, VPs, A&Rs, like everywhere, just out and about talking, chilling, drinking. Like my my experience at NAMM never had anything like that. And I've been to so many AES New York events. It's ridiculous. But NAMM in Nashville was incredible. I made so many people like I just made so many friends and people I had just been talking to online. Um like on um, like Joe Carroll, talking to him for years. Never met Joe Carroll. Go to go to Nashville downtown, see Joe Carroll for like two days straight. <laughs> Hanging out. It's a chilling. small world. It's it a is. very small little community. It is, but it's so fun and it's so cool. And it's like when we all kind of meet each other and, and talk to each other, like I have no I have no doubts that I'm going to literally come over there and see you one day and we're gonna talk all kinds of audio and go for all sure. kinds of places and try food and drinks and go to studios oh, yeah. and have a good time. And that's the cool thing about it. It's like we have this really dope moving community that travels a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a lot. And like we all have the ability to get to all the cr- the heights that we aspire to get to. Like you said, it's just you got we got to do the work for it. You and you got to be in it long enough also and not quit. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, man. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like it's like the successes I'm seeing today are because of, you know, especially the work I've put in for five years straight and also a decade straight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's like just, just being there and doing that work and it's a slog, but eventually you start to see the fruits of those labors. Like it's, it's just a matter of time if you're proficient enough and you work hard enough, you know? Yep. You're like you, need a couple, right. you need some basic level of, of understanding and you have to be able to push yourself and have a good work ethic. But Oh my God, a good work ethic. A good work ethic cannot be... Oh, man, it it I don't think enough can be said for it. I think I think a lot of people I think a lot of people really believe that it happens overnight. I really do feel like yeah. a lot of people believe that like they wholeheartedly believe like, oh, this person didn't do it by themselves. But this person has been working for like a decade <laughs> yeah. and that overnight just happened to be over the weekend because they went to a function. Yeah, I mean, that's what like, Gary V says, like, right, like the people overestimate what they can do in a year and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. Mm-hmm. And as somebody who's been doing this for about a decade, I totally see that. It's crazy. Like every year it's like, well, what did I do this year? But I look back at 10 years, like, holy shit, look how much has happened, how much I've done, how much I've been a yeah. part of. You know? How much you've grown. Like gro- grown. growth, growth cannot be under, undersold. I mean, oversold. Like growth is a, yeah. is growth is highly highly underrated in our industry like the way somebody sounded last year versus this year can astronomically change their career trajectory like yeah like a guy that was like the worst mixing engineer a year ago could literally surpass everybody because they literally stuck their head down and just was like i'm gonna do as many records as possible and get as good as possible while everybody else was doing nothing. Yes. Like, dude. <laughs> whole corona went by, but look what happened. <laughs> Cor- coronavirus, like, coronavirus was literally where, like, the metal, like, the rubber meets the road for a lot of people. It was, it yes. was like, it was like the stop point for a lot of people. And it was like, so you're either going to make it or this is the end of the road. And unfortunately for a lot of people, this was the end of the road. But, like, um... Shoot, someone like myself, dude. I, I was out here running like Usain Bolt out here, man. <laughs> I know you told me last time. It's like, okay, we got over Corona and we just like ran. <laughs> yeah, it was, dude. It it has been the most fantastic two years of my life. Like the growth right. has been crazy. Shoot, look, I I just got my second commemorative plaque in here like a couple days ago, dude. Like it was literally the the second time in my life where I all these. It's, it's, how can I explain it? It's like, it's like the step right before you get to like the big lights. 
right before you walk on stage is where I feel I am right now. Yeah. I feel very similarly, actually. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like so much has like happened and, tr- and like a lot of things have like come together. And it's like, I'm like this close to being, you know, in that, in that world that I, I don't know what it is that I want. I don't even know if this is really <laughs> what I want, but you know, like being like, yeah, on the stage, you know, on the bigger stage, just like by just doing those things that you've been, you know, you know, you need to do. I don't know. Yeah. No, no. You're, you're, look, you're a hundred percent on it. No, seriously. Because it's like you, you put in all this work and all this effort and, you know, some people will, will minimize what it is they want. Like some people are just like, I just want the money and the fame. You know what I'm saying? I just want to have a name, my name and lights or whatever. Like, you know, let me know people to know who I am. And that's, that's great. Me, I, I have simplified mine down to, I want, I want, I'm trying to win a Grammy. Right. And everyone is like, okay. And then what? And I'm like, well, there is no, and then what? Like the, the path to winning it, there, there's all these things that have to happen before you win it. And it's a very, and right. people don't, and, and it's like, it's like my, me personally, mm. I, I realized the path, which means there is an entire string of events of different things and achievements I have to get on the way to mm-hmm. getting that particular thing that I'm not skipping over. So, right. You're, you're here you know, to enjoy the journey. I think you actually talked a little bit about this on your, on your previous episode, if I remember oh, correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love that. I feel like you have a goal, but you're also, but the other goal is that journey towards that goal. So oh, yeah. it's like, like I'm going to enjoy this process of reaching that goal. You have to, though. That's the cool thing about it. You have to. Because, yeah. dude, look how long we've been doing this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're, if you're going to like commiserate for like a decade until you get to where you want to oh, go. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> is it worth it? <laughs> well, that, and that's the, that's the cool thing about it. It's like the, the, path, the path to the goal, you, you kind of achieving all these different things, meeting all these different people, and living your life. You know what I mean? That again, we we get to do something that most people can only dream of, and that's we get to actually live our dreams. You know what I mean? And every year, yeah. we could literally say every year we've expanded on that to greater heights and greater depths and greater lengths. It's it's it is a fulfillment that unfortunately a lot of people will never truly understand or reach. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm I'm very grateful yeah. for that and. A lot of folks in our community are very, very grateful for that, too. It's they, it's not just the, oh, I'm good at this, so I stuck with it. A lot of folks, it's like, you know what? I've loved this from the very moment I started, and I'm very, very lucky and blessed to be able to still be here in it. Yeah, it's so true. Does It's not doesn't go without saying, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, a lot of people... We lost a lot of uh, of uh, of our people in the in the coronavirus. Like just like okay, that's it. I'm packing up my bags. God knows there were a couple of moments I came close. To be honest, uh, oh dude, you but, and me both, man. I, I think but I think we all kind of stared that stared ourselves in the mirror and were like, okay, this could be the day. <laughs> right, exactly. And then it's like it's the, then everything just kind of pushes through, and yeah, it was. Very, I'm not gonna lie, Wait, it was a very it was a little disheartening watching a lot of studios close for sure. Yeah, it's it's just like economics, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> what are you gonna do? At yeah. a certain point, you gotta you gotta bring in some business to 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 keep yourself afloat. You were you were gonna say something about the work ethic, and I feel like I may have cut you off. Oh uh, no no no! It no it. I mean, we can go on about work, work ethic for like a literally a whole episode. <laughs> because well, it's, give me a little a little taste, because I think it's important. Work work ethic in our industry. Some people, some people see it as, well, uh, we're going to clean these bathrooms. <laughs> some people see work ethic as I'm going to be here in this basement all day, every day, and we're just going to make it happen until it happens. I look at work ethic as it has to be all of the above or you shouldn't do it at all. Work ethic to me dictates the individual has to be committed to the task at hand and just because that task is a a journey for years at a time does not mean that the actual task should not be completed as you've decided that you've wanted to go and take the journey for it. So when we talk about work ethic, I like I liken work ethic to this is the path I'm on. I know this is the path I'm on and it's not an easy path. The journey is hard. It's long. 
It's tiring. It's gruesome. I have to learn how to balance things. And if I want to be successful in this path, I have to both listen and adapt at the same time so that way I can make it on this path that I have chosen. So my work ethic has also taught me mental stability and how to be focused when I need to be focused on the actual path that I'm on and the things that I'm doing that intersect with this path. Like this path also intersects with my path as a father. It intersects with this path as a son. It intersects with the path with me as a friend. It intersects with the path of me as a provider. It, it, all these different things, all these different paths that we all walk or that we, the things that we hold with us as we walk this journey, sometimes people forget that these things all require work, but so do your dreams. And the cool thing about the work ethic of your dreams is you decide how much you're going to work today, how much mm. you're going to put in today. Because when most people see they're like the jar is, you know, half full, the reality is the jar is as full as we want it to be. It can overflow. There's no cap and there's no limit. You know what I mean? We, we right. only, we sleep because our body tells us we need to sleep. But the reality is most of us, a lot of us are used to very little to no sleep. And we could really go on and work and keep it moving because we've adapted. <laughs> you know what I mean? But this is the path we're on. We're, we're built for this. And if you're not built for it, you can adapt and be built for it. You don't have to worry about someone saying, oh, you don't belong here. Your journey is your journey. No one, no one can take you off of it. Sure, you might run into people on the same journey and path as you, but your work ethic will be the thing that keeps you all together or it shoves, it shoves you all apart. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, so, so, I mean, you mentioned so much in there. Uh, I guess what I would ask you is, is how do you know how much to balance your, your personal stuff versus your business stuff and, and your work stuff? Like, how do you, um, how do you maintain shoot. a healthy balance? You have to learn to shoot your ego in the kneecap <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> your, 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 a person's ego will, will not have them say, I'm sorry to their significant other when they're about to do some work and our mental stability when we're about to work will determine a lot of things. It interferes and also helps with how we actually perceive the things we're about to work on, AKA music, because music is an emotional medium. Our emotional state, both good, bad, and in between, will will bleed out into the thing we're working on. So yeah. I say you have to shoot your ego in the knee sometimes because sometimes you just need to be, you need to be a fresh slate. You don't need to go into it with an attitude. You don't need to go into it feeling blue or feeling down. Sometimes you just got to be like, you know what? <sighs> I'm sorry. Let's just do this, this, and this. Okay, cool. I got to work. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay? Okay. Balance restored. You see what I mean? Sometimes that's how it has to be. And sometimes you don't have a choice and you're just going to be angry and you're going to be upset and you're going to have to do this, this, and this because it's still your job to get this and this done. You have to, the balancing act is, is life. You know, look, remember, this is the journey we chose to do. Everybody else just happens to be around us while we're on the journey. So it's our responsibility. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's our responsibility to, again, balance, like, you, like we were talking about, balance the things and people in our lives with the journey that we're on. So they don't feel left behind. And if you don't want to leave people behind and if you want them to be part of your lives and if you a want to be part of their lives and be at the same time, make sure that they understand that the journey you're on requires time and dedication. You know, it's the balancing act is giving and taking. Sometimes I want to take the energy from my friends and family because I need it to get through the day. But sometimes I see that I need to give them good energy because they need it, too. Yeah. It's just about, uh, I guess, finding the right balance for you and and uh, using the time that you do have to to do your work for your journey, you know, appropriately and just not wasting time and just 
just going for it. Dude, you know what? Scheduling. <laughs> yes. The nerdiest. Putting, the putting nerdiest it on the, on the calendar. Yeah. Like put, put having a calendar where, where you have time scheduled to either whether it's a recording schedule, because obviously you got to schedule anyway. But if you're mixing, yeah, put like four or five hours on a calendar to mix. 